you. It, it's such a pleasure to be here among friends is how I feel. Um, the fact that I can lay out a bunch of uh, creative works outside that are not completed and uh, knowing that you guys get it, that you live this and breathe this, I, I love that. So thank you so much for having me today. It's, uh, I'm going to be flipping through some slides, so hopefully this uh, you'll be able to read along or I'll be able to read with you. Um, just a little bit about my journey. When I was invited to come and speak, I was so excited because my, my magazine is called Moments, but really it is so much a part of myself and what I do. Uh, how I live my creative life is living in the moment. So we're gonna explore that a little bit today. And you all came in and got a puzzle that uh, my husband Tim was able to give you today. And we'll, uh, we'll jump into that a little bit later, but for now I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, when I started my business in 25th, or sorry, 2008, um, I had my own manifesto at the time. And I want to read this to you because I think it really relates to uh, how I do business. And I think how a lot of us in creative, um, creative businesses, we want to put ourselves out there. We want to live in the moment. So bear with me. I'll just read this out for you because it's a little small. Take a minute to think about the moments you've had today this week, this year. Some have been difficult and you've had to buckle down and get down to the work of life. Other moments have allowed you the space to breathe, to feel creative and to play. Those are the best moments. <laughs> moments can make or break us. Moments can give us energy or drain the very life from us. That's what, it's what we do with each of those moments that count. And they all count. When you look at the life of your business, organization, product, or idea, you'll see moments too. Some are tough, but others are light and energized. We're here to help create more of those moments, the ones filled with passion, creativity, fun, color, and imagination. Surprising, memorable moments. When you take time to build those moments into the life of your business, something magical happens. Your message, cause, or idea becomes irresistible. That moment, when your message connects deeply with those you wish to serve, that's a moment to remember. That's what I call a candy moment. Sweet, fun, colorful, you can't wait to have another taste. At Candy, we've had the privilege of co-creating memorable moments together with a lot of businesses and organizations just like yours. And I say here's to creating more candy moments. This was something I put together before I had ever started my business. Um, it felt like a big dream. It felt like how can, especially in the event planning world, um, I'm an event planner. Um, there's a lot of A-type personalities in event planning, uh, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of deadlines, and a lot of things that you just got to get done immediately. You've got to put out a lot of fires. Uh, <laughs> for me to put this out, it was saying, we're different. We're going to be doing things a little bit different than any, everybody else. I'm saying, we can make mistakes. We can change our mind. Uh, we can be surprised. We can do things differently than anybody else was doing in the event business at the time, or it felt like to me. So a little bit about me. Uh, this is me in 2017. So, so uh, thank you to Carly and Carol for the photo, but <laughs> sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking, man, I wish I looked like that, you know, done and, and together, but usually it's pajamas and ponytails. And <laughs> Creating doesn't always look pretty, but the beautiful thing about what this is and what this says to me is that I am a creative professional, whatever that means to me. And I've embraced that. Um, I don't apologize for it. I've put myself out there. And for me, at the beginning, to say I was an artist was a really hard space to be in because there were so many amazing artists in my life that I was admiring. I thought, how could I possibly be there? But. This is me in 1982. <laughs> I don't know if you can all see this, but I'm not looking incredibly happy here. <laughs> and if you look at the points down here, I'm aspiring to everything. I was looking at everyone else was doing everything so much better than me. Um, I was 12 at the time, and we were moving from Saskatoon to Winnipeg. I wasn't happy about it. Uh, I was going to miss all my friends. Every one of those bookmarks that I drew for them was one of my friends that I was going to miss. And I wanted to honor them by creating a specific bookmark 
for each one of those friends. So I went to school and we had this ceremony and, <laughs> and then I was off to Winnipeg. But I was a little bit lost because I was 13 at the time, trying to find my way, knowing that I love to create. But all of a sudden you have to start picking a career and making a difference. And, and uh, that to me felt a little bit confined and a little bit tough because you're getting more into really what are you going to do with your life? Thankfully, I had a family that was um, very open to me being a creative. They were very creative themselves. So it was a motivating force for me um, to really be able to express myself. That was through music, it was through art, um, through lots of nature, hiking, that kind of thing, really putting myself in a space where I could create. Um, this picture also says to me that it was a coping strategy. <laughs> How many of us? Um, have used our art or our creative endeavors to help get over something that is really difficult. This is a picture to me that says that it's part of my life where, not just in the happy times, but in the times where you really have to dig deep and move forward. So how do you create a creative career? Um, for me, it's about a lifetime of moments strung together. So I love this quote to dream big, but to start small, and put up your hand if you've ever had trouble starting a project. <laughs> I have to put two hands up for that because for me, I'm a perfectionist. As much as I love to just play and, and create, it's the starting for me that is usually the biggest deal because I wanna do it right, I wanna make sure that I've got everything I need before I get going. So this is such an awesome quote for that. So back to, and I love being in this building because this is my childhood school. This is, what it, this is what it looks like. So these are just some things. I've got my girlfriends on the bottom, right? And, and I've got um, projects that I've done. I've always loved to put words and teaching and learning together with my artistic ability or with pictures um, to help understand and explain concepts. And, uh, and I'm so proud because I won a contest in Saskatoon. Um, it's not a beautiful ad. <laughs> My own logo. Um, but it was just a chance for me just to see what else is there. Like, how can you use this in a bigger way? Um, and when I realized that actually using your creative talents actually can help motivate people, um, that was a cool thing. All of a sudden, cleaning up and doing chores was cool. <laughs> Make them look smiley, give them a, a fun thing to do. Um, and because I, I grew up in a family that was very connected to our community, very much um, giving back in the inner city of Winnipeg, this became a really big deal for me to start to use my creative talent to give back to the community. Something that I could do that was a little different than building a house or that kind of thing. So moving on uh, in my creative career, I had a, um, an opportunity to make a decision. Either I could go back and get another job or I could start doing my artwork in a bigger way. Um, I was doing a lot of volunteering with my work, did a mural at a women's shelter for the children, uh, 50 feet long, and this was a fun thing to do. Um, but the police had seen my work and it was really neat for me um, where, when they approached me and they said, well, we've got these books. And initially, this first one, my mom says, um, We've got these books, but uh, all I have is stick people. Really important topic. This one was actually an intervention for child sexual abuse. Um, and I was thinking, well, I love community. I love giving back, but this was big. This was something that I wasn't sure if it was something I could take on. Not only that, um, I had been called schizophrenic in my artistic style. <laughs> I had said, you know what, you're never gonna make it. Choose something, why don't you stop dabbling and just choose something. This was an opportunity for me to put my stake in the ground, to claim the moment and say, I'm gonna try. I'll try to put something together. Uh, that led to the second book. Once the dads saw my mom had a book, um, the dads were saying, well, we need a book too. So we did a second, second book and you'll find um, at the back uh, just the process of getting that together, some of the pieces of that. Um, so I started to learn that I could actually use my talent in a way that was really connected to my heart for the community. So these three pictures, I just picked a, a couple of them for you, but um, 
it was important for me to see that the community passion I had was extended through my business. So uh, the one on the, with the hat here, uh, we were teaching young event planners on how to start their businesses, how to be involved in the events industry. Um, at the bottom, this was in Winnipeg, uh, an amazing man that had passed away but had a huge impact in the inner city of Winnipeg, put together a few events for them. And at the top, I've had the chance to really share the messages from so many different organizations and small businesses that really need to have their story told. So this became such a big part of what I do to the point where now I have um, built a business on supporting and helping a lot of creatives that are planning or promoting their own events. Um, they might be in the nonprofit realm or in a, a business sense. Uh, but moments became my expression of that, where how can we support and help? How can we come alongside? So just a couple of concepts that hopefully you can take with you today. Uh, the first one is start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. So again, this is similar to just start, uh, just in the sense of at some point, um, you have to use the resources you have. Some of us wait or want to wait. Um, but I say that it all starts with the spirit of curiosity. So in the spirit of curiosity, we have to be okay to dabble. We have to be okay to just put ourselves out there, to ask questions. And the beauty of asking questions, when you start dabbling into something, um, it leads to more questions, it leads to other things, maybe a rabbit trail that you want to go down. Um, and what's really neat about that process of asking questions and being curious, not only do you learn, but you learn things about yourself, about what resonates with you, um, the change agent piece of that, all of a sudden you get passionate about things and you think, I could make a difference or I could be part of something bigger. Uh, being a curious learner, uh, I say that is for yourself as much as it, as it is for the projects that you work on, we're always learning. And I was joking with one of my volunteers the other day. Um, we were working an event and I was in pain. And <laughs> I'm almost, it feels like I'm almost 50. And, and I've been at this a long time, but I feel like I've just scratched the surface of what's possible creatively. Um, so always learn. Um, and the community adv advocate piece for me is that we're never here just for ourselves. That's why I love, <laughs> that's what I love what we're doing with Creative Mornings, is we are here for each other and there's that support. Um, just a thought, this is my quote, uh, don't take moments for granted. Um, when you're talking about moments of inspiration, the cool thing about moments of inspiration is that there really doesn't have to be any end result attached to it. So I have noticed that they come out of nowhere. Um, I'm inspired by this building today, this is incredible. Um, but you don't know where they're gonna come from, so be open to wherever they're gonna be coming from. Um, are they going to feel new and intriguing? How do you recognize uh, when you're inspired? I think we all have a different way of understanding what that means. Um, but just to be open to it, to something new. Whoops. Uh, the compelling attributes. So this piece of it, I also think um, when you can think of your inspiration almost as a new relationship. So how many of you have been in that space where you're intrigued by something, someone says something, or they walk in and you're thinking, what is that, and who is that, and, and what's going on for me? The cool thing about inspiration is you don't have to make a commitment at that point. You just get to flirt with it a bit. <laughs> you just get to find out what's new, ask some questions. Um, and I love the compelling attributes because all of a sudden you start to see um, a thread through everything that you've been learning or everything that you, questions you've been asking or things that have been resonating with you, you start to see over the years, in my case, um, some of those things that keep popping up and you're thinking there's something about that. There's something that I need to, um, I'm compelled to do something about that and there's a welcome warmth. Um, I wasn't sure if I should put that because it sounds a little like softy, but you're, creatives, you get that. Um, but when, you, when you're in a relationship, you found that space, um, it is compelling, it continues to be compelling. There's a warmth there, right? Where you wanna learn more, you wanna be with that person. Same thing, you wanna be with that inspiration and sit with it a while. So don't be afraid of that sort of not sure where it's going, let it be. Another thought of mine, hold your ideas lightly, 
and be careful not to squeeze the inspiration out of them. So how many of us hold our ideas super tight? Nobody? <laughs> We've got one. <laughs> I used to be terrible for this because I'm thinking, but that's the one, that's gonna be the idea. The big million dollar idea was never about money for me. It was like, what is gonna allow me to express myself in the most amazing way possible and I'm feeling fulfilled? That's when it dies because we haven't allowed it to breathe like a fire inside of us. You need that air, you need to let it go and let it grow. Um, so the idea of catch and release for me is really about, we say embrace the moment, and I kept hitting on this when I was preparing for the talk today because I'm thinking embrace the moment, embrace the moment, but when I'm thinking of, like talk about relationships again, if somebody's constantly embracing you, do you not wanna just push away <laughs> and get out of that space, right? Because you need that time, you need room to grow. So embrace the moment, but be willing to let it go. If it has to just sort of brew on its own in another corner of the room, let it do that. Um, the inspiration will come and go. So it might feel like it's a brand new piece of inspiration or something else that's coming into your life. Let it be okay if it heads out the door because you're gonna, you've learned through that process, you've gained some things through that process, um, but it's, it will come back if it's meant to. Um, this, uh, the reason why I have the umbrella <laughs> with some raindrops is that the catch and release can be really hard because you're catching things, but I used to say when I was doing my artwork, and I, especially with the books, I've done about 11 books, um, I would say it's like cutting off my arm every time I, I'm done or I'm letting it go. But the piece of letting it go, the catch and release, is that you're actually releasing so something else has room to come back or come into your life and to grow again. So it's really important, um, this come and go concept, but also when life gets in the way, not panic. Be okay. The same way that inspiration comes and goes, you will come and go to those inspirations as well. You, sometimes I went through a really tough um, time through a divorce, I, I had to move, we've moved 11 times, we've had a bunch of houses. Lots of times I had to put my stuff on the back burner and say, today my kids matter. Today I've gotta deal with these, this paperwork or I've gotta make sure that I'm getting to this place on time. That is when life gets in the way and it doesn't have to be discouraging, it just means we're managing through, and I'm trusting the process, I'm trusting my ability to be creative, and that it will come back around when it's meant to be. So I, and just in the end of that, to release and experience that peace, that's a beautiful moment when you can let it go and you can just trust that you are still you, you've got your experiences, and you can pick it up again. So you have everything you need today to build something far bigger than yourself. So this to me speaks to community. This speaks to something far greater than just us and us creating. And I used to tease um, about this idea of just sitting in your home and in your hole and creating and it's fun. I love that. <laughs> but there is a responsibility um, to creative and I believe being creative and I believe that um, to whom much is given, there is much required. And so I've always lived my life like this. The more I'm given in my life, the more I want to extend that out to others in my life. Uh, so this is just, uh, when I was thinking about ideas taking flight, um, inspirations fit together. I'm gonna re just read this, because to me it just feels like, oh, that's a really cool process. I'm all about process. Um, that ideas, or these inspirations, they fit together into concrete ideas, and that's what we present to our teams or things that we're working on. And those ideas evolve to meet issues. So all of a sudden, you've kind of have this space where it's a cool idea, and there's this issue over here that somehow it works to apply. And yes, there's some massaging that needs to happen in that. Um, but when those ideas meet the issues, you can start to find innovative solutions. Because you're creative, you're still creating, it's not locked in, you can move from those issues to the solutions. And I believe that innovations in any form can make a huge impact to the community. And everyone will have a different voice and a different way of doing that, but it's important to have a voice. 
So you were all given your puzzle uh, when you came in. So if you could pull that out with your marker and play with me for a second. Um, take out also your, uh, the envelope as well, if you can grab that. Did everyone get one? Anyone need one? You need one here? And I, I will endorse wrestling people for other colors if you need them. <laughs> Arm wrestle for the orange if you need it. That's my color. <laughs> All right, so if you could write your name on the envelope, nice and big, bold, however you want to do it, fancy, teeny, whatever. <laughs> and what I want you to do on the puzzle piece, it, or on the puzzle, is for you to actually use words, pictures, you can do uh, artwork of any kind, whatever makes sense to you. <laughs> um, stick figures are totally okay. Um, I want you to think of one big project, one big idea, one big dream, something that you really, really want to see happen in your life. It could be for family, it could be for work, it could be a creative pursuit of some kind. Um, I, I'm going to give you just like two minutes, so you got to do this without, like, and uh, this is tough for a creative group, right? It's like playing Pictionary <laughs> with an artist. <laughs> Never have them on your team. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be perfect. This is for your eyes only. So don't worry that we're not going to share these. Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes um, to just go for it. While you're doing that, I'm going to be reading something that I actually was read in a yoga class that I was at last week. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm lying there thinking this is perfect. So I found it. And I'm going to read this for you while you do this. And once I'm done reading this passage, then we're going to do one more thing with, our or with your puzzles. So... So, go. <laughs> okay, this is called Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie. Cherish each moment. Stop waiting for the one moment in time that will change your life. Instead, cherish all the moments. A desert cactus that blooms briefly only once a year does not consider all the moments. It is not in bloom wasted. It considers them necessary and important. It knows the rest of the year, the rest of its life, is beautiful too. All the moments count, the quiet moments, the moments of boredom and solitude, the moments of sharing, exciting moments of discovery, the moments of grandeur, the agonizing moments when we feel sad, angry, and upset. Each moment in time is equally important. Don't wait and hope for one thing, one person, one event that will change your life or plummet you into the future and a life that you desire. Instead, remember that each moment in time brings change, evolution, transformation. Most of us relish the magnificent creative experiences, those tremendous discoveries, those important times of change, but those moments don't happen that often. The truth is, each moment in time is a creative experience and important time of change. Cherish all your moments. Soon you will see the beauty and power of each. That each moment has value. Let each day of your life be creative. Let each day of your life be the creative experience you seek. The power to change and evolve lies within you. Life as you desire it is happening right now. Your destiny is here. Cherish all your moments. Embrace the beauty and the importance of each one. Now, what I would love for you to do, now if it needs to dry, I will, it might need a little bit, a couple minutes to dry. Um, what I would encourage you to do and invite you to do is break this thing apart once it's dry and tuck it in that envelope that has your name in it, or on top. And put this beside your workspace, put it in a drawer, maybe in your purse or your bag. Um, and what I want you to do is when you pull out one of those puzzle pieces and you just see a line, or maybe there's a couple of eyes there, or a word, um, I want you to trust the process. Because what happens when you've got 
one little puzzle piece and we, how many of you are like me where you see a project and sometimes it is so close to you that you can't actually see that the big picture is coming together? It's coming together, whether you feel it or sense it or not. So trust the process, believe that big things are capable, that you're capable of putting those big things together and stay open to what that looks like for you in the moment. And in retrospect, you'll be able to look back and actually see that you've accomplished some really big things. So as you're doing that, uh, my last quote here is, your business is your artistic canvas to creatively merge your head and your heart. And that is what my business has been for me since uh, 2008. It has been a journey in making that happen. So how have I experienced my beautiful big picture in retrospect? Uh, it comes through my business, Candy Event Consulting. And like, like we had already mentioned, I do training, support, coaching for anybody that's planning or promoting their own events. So we don't fly in, save the day, um, and you guys would be hands off. We embed ourselves in teams, volunteer teams, groups, nonprofits, entrepreneurial adventures, and we really come alongside and support people um, through coaching, through workshops, through our magazine or other supports that we have. I have found in releasing myself to the process and really enjoying the ride, um, got remarried, what, four and a half years ago? <laughs> and it has been an amazing adventure. Uh, I, I have allowed myself deeper connections. I have stopped surviving and I've started to thrive. Um, the workshops that we run are happening every, almost every month. Um, and there is a growing passion and purpose in my life and I am excited for what's coming next. I also have a volunteer team of 11, 12 right now. Um, that come and go from different events and different training opportunities. Um, they are either aspiring creatives, aspiring communication pros, marketing, event planning. So I help get them connected to the industry. But also it's such a gift to me to meet with these young ladies that are so um, vibrant and ready to go and amazing rock stars. They're just fantastic. And this is, I call this nurturing our own in-house creative team because when I got married, I have two girls of my own. They're just right beside me there. Um, Tim has three kids and we've got three grandkids and then some extended people that just show up at our house now and then. Um, but it's been such a neat process for me, raising my children in a creative way, allowing them to grow and create in their own way. Um, but then also now with my stepkids and with the grandkids, it just sort of is like all starting over again. We get to play and do karaoke and stuff. It's always fun. Um, so what I would like to just, I guess, end with is this idea of where you're at, um, remind yourself that the moments are important, the inspiration in that moment is important, but there is a big picture and, and remember to look back and enjoy what you're seeing and celebrate those moments that have actually come together into something big for you. Don't forget those things. Thank you. So what was the largest event that you have ever? Largest event. So, um, like enjoy large or no? <laughs> Sometimes it's the smallest ones that I love the most, um, but I, I helped to uh, plan and promote and I was um, promotions coordinator for a 15,000 person conference up in Edmonton and did that for two years. So I was responsible for all the hospitality. Um, that would mean all the bands coming through and all the speakers and getting everybody fed. And then I was also responsible for 150, I think it was about 150 booths at the trade show and getting people down. It was at the Shaw Conference Center. And, and the beauty of that one is they had classrooms all over downtown Edmonton. If you've ever been there, it's a little bit of a scatter. So to try to get 1,500 people into classes, it was a big deal, but yeah, it was fun. Totally. Mm -hmm. 
You know what's really, and I think that that's part of why I've chosen an event planning deadline driven career because I am a big picture thinker and I have, if you, probably everybody knows about false deadlines. So I will actually create false deadlines for things and I will actually create a deadline for something that might not even matter. Like it's just something I'm working on or I'm doing like coloring pages or whatever. Like I'll just kind of set deadlines. Like I want to get three things done this week. Um, but part of that, and that's where you're looking at that big picture. Um, so to, to work on a strategy for yourself, and sometimes it's six months out or a year out or five years out, um, and get specific on what that looks like. Write down the steps. You know what the steps would be, but it's in the execution of that, being willing to flex. Because if something is not working, like don't keep beating at that, like let that piece of it go and allow the process to continue. When we're at planning events, we're planning a year and a half or a year out from that event that we have to get a very detailed plan in place to make it happen. But within that plan, allow yourself to, that freedom and buffer time and create time that there's some things I tell clients, there's something that some things that are non-negotiable, like we have to book a physical space. There's other things that allow it to grow, allow it to play. And so it is that difficulty, I think, of the big picture. I have a workshop called um, Creative Conversations from Ideas to Impact because I felt like we can talk a lot as creatives in that big space. Nobody has a shortage of ideas. <laughs> it's putting wheels on that bus. And that's what for me is really motivating is when you actually fulfill on a, a project and it, you release it to the world, there's a real rush to that, that I actually, it's, it's both and, you have to be doing both. But I think we get lost or we get really connected to, or attached to our plan without allowing sort of that catch and release to happen sort of in the process, so yeah. And that's just experience, that's just time, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, d I get really busy. Actually, I had a, a rough week a couple of weeks ago and, and my automatic reaction is just to start something. So I'll pull out a sketchbook or I'll start typing something or I'll be out, I'll take myself for a walk or something just so that I'm in motion. And I feel like it, my dad used to say, um, sort of uh, when you're connected, well, the, the line is, but when you're connected to a dock, your boat's going nowhere. So as long as I'm free and I'm moving, I feel like then I'm opening myself up to actually getting over that hump. So not getting too, I, I get in my head too much, so I've got to just get my body moving or get something happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You spoke of artistic dabbling and then focusing. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do you find the balance between the two? Because I find that the dabbling sometimes feeds back into the focus mm -hmm. in that you're dabbling and all the little things that don't seem like they add into the focus part mm -hmm. tend to kind of do that, but at the same yeah. time you don't want to be too scattered because yeah. then you're a master of none. Totally. How do you find that balance? So I, I categorize, I, I tend to be, and I think part of that is I was a single mom for a long time, so I, I tend to be very driven and very results oriented, so because I have to make money or I got to get this thing through and you're, you're pushing stuff through. So my categories would be probably an 80-20 for me where I'm 80% on task, I'm, I'm moving things forward, but I try to reserve that space, like the dabbling piece. Um, some dabbling, like I haven't drawn for a long time until this last year, um, just because I felt like I didn't have time or whatever, but I, I told myself, take a Saturday morning, do one whatever it is, like I, I threw it out on Facebook and I told friends to just give me a name or a quote or a something and then I would draw, my sister said spaghetti something explosion or something <laughs> and then so I just, that's my double. It, it just gives me something that is, is not attached to a project or a client. Um, so I think that's important because then you allow yourself to stay fresh and play, like we all need play. That's actually the topic of our next magazine is play. How do you start to integrate that in your work life? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, well thank you very much. Thank you.